This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. <laughs> she has, <laughs> the fact that she has the personality of an eight-year-old is explained in her root. That's kind of cool, but I still don't want to do it. <laughs> Our daily habits become a part of who we are. That goes for everything from the natural routines, like washing your face or brushing your teeth, to the obsessive rituals, like always moving your left leg first when you walk. <laughs> or always putting on your coat right hand first, then left hand. I don't know... I know I don't run every single day for some conscious reason. The habit's just ingrained into my personality by this point. I do like action scenes. That's kind of why I played this game. <laughs> Doesn't matter how tired I am. Doesn't matter if it's pouring rain, doesn't matter if the wind's blowing me all over the road. Even if I get a little sick, I'm out there running it like it's the cure for the common cold. 16 kilometers every morning like clockwork. In one month, that's 460... That's not how it that's reads. Let's try that again. In one month, that's 496. In a year, 5,840. When you work it out, I'm running the distance to Singapore annually with change to spare. A pretty respectful distance, if I do say so myself. Not that I'm particularly aiming to go see the, Mer the Merleon or try out the famous chicken rice. My itinerary is strictly local. Every day, I make my way around the outer walls of the school, past the shuttered doors of the shopping district, and by a few poorly maintained Shino shrines. Every day, I take in the same coastal scenery. It might sound repetitive, but I don't feel any need to change my standard course. Running a familiar road at a familiar pace makes for better training. That said, my route isn't completely set in stone. For example, if I happen to notice an acquaintance nearby, I'll sometimes head in their direction. Not that I chase people around town, of course, I just catch up and offer a brief greeting. It just seems like the polite thing to do, especially when they're a school friend of mine. In quotes. This morning, as I'm following my standard marathon route around the Academy's campus, I catch the sight of Machisima Michiru. I'd plan to do free quick laps around the school before heading toward the station, but Michiru's appearance gives me pause. Even from a distance, her body language is clearly unusual. From the way she's trudging along the road with her shoulders slumped, you'd think the force of gravity's operating at double strength in her immediate vicinity. Something seems distinctly off with the girl. Then again, it's still very early in the morning, and I don't want to disturb her privacy. Probably better not to call out to her. All the characters, why they behave the way they do, are explained in the root. Yumiko's distrust, Sachi's obedience, Amine's sister complex, Makina's childish behavior, and Michiru's tsundere attitude. Huh. Interesting. That's kind of cool that you get to learn that. As I make my way through the shopping district, I try to think of reasons why Michiru would leave the school at such an early hour. She's a little young to be heading to a public park for radio calisthenics, so what's her objective? When I happen to spot the girl for the second time in this one training session, my curiosity proves harder to suppress. This time, I'm running along the coast when I notice her blonde hair dead ahead. She's walking slowly up the same road, her head slightly bowed. At this rate, I'll catch up to her very soon. When I overtake her, I can just say a quick hello. But Michiru abruptly turns off my route. Before I have the chance to say anything, she's vanished down a side path. Having completed my standard 16 kilometers, I return to the dorm as usual. Usually, I'd take a quick shower first. But the uncharacteristic melancholy I could see in Michiru, even from a distance, seems to have left an oddly strong impression on me. It's weighing on my mind. Yeah, I get it, Marty. School takes priority. We're classmates, I suppose. Can't hurt to stick my nose in every once in a while. Mumbling something of an excuse to myself, I wipe the sweat from my neck with a towel, then head back outside the school grounds. I have to say, though... I don't understand people who dream about living in a house by the sea. The ocean breeze makes everything rust. The moisture makes it hard to dry your laundry. If a seaside town sounds romantic, you've probably never lived in one. Sure, you can come to love your home wherever it may be. But let me assure you, there's nothing idyllic about drunken teenagers partying on the beach for months at a time. Especially given their tendency to watch fireworks at midnight. You know, Yuji spitting facts. <laughs> Let's see. I'm pretty sure she was headed this way. Ooh! This is pretty! The landscapes in this game are beautiful. And that little animation of the sea. Oh, this is beautiful. I find Michiru seated on a high ridge overlooking the sea, aimlessly gazing into the distance. I approach slowly, but she appears oblivious to my presence. I'm consciously taking loud, conscious, and conspicuous te steps. 
To no apparent effect, the girl's carelessness exceeds my expectations. She is crumpled into herself like a load of laundry long forgotten in the hamper. More than anything else, she looks worn out. Exhausted, even. Almost like a completely different person. <laughs> Yuji, you might want to do the Olympics. Uh, probably not. He's probably like, no, this is just who I am. <laughs> like Shadow the Hedgehog. If you're looking for action scenes, Machina's and Yumiko's roots have the most. Amine's has a ton, but it's done differently, and you can't elaborate without spoiling. Okay. Yeah, this is this this landscape, it's so pretty. I'm planning on doing the roots of the characters who I'm interested in. I'm not saying I won't do every route, but I'll, I will say this. I will not be doing every route, like, this year. I'm going to be taking breaks, for sure. Mm-hmm. You sad, Michiru? I hear the sound of the waves in the distance. The sunlight is gentle this morning. The weather is fair and pleasant. The location isn't bad either, but this is an early morning picnic and she's forgotten to bring food. Michiru? The fastest way to figure out what she's doing here is probably just to ask her, but she doesn't respond to my voice. What's wrong? Waiting to get picked up by the garbage truck? Wow! We are so mean to this! Everyone is so mean to this girl! In that case, you gotta label yourself as oversized waste. <laughs> yeah, meet your some weird poses. <laughs> if you play one or two roots and you get sucked in, that's what happened. That's what happened to me in Quanad! <laughs> oh, of course Shadow is a fun game to mock. It's not terrible, it's just got a lot of norm in it. They can't pick up bottle blondes if you just dump one on the curb, I'm afraid. You're so rude. Normally a remark like this would be met by an indignant cryptic shriek of Mookie! As soon as it left my mouth. But today I get nothing. Just what is going on with this girl? I rapidly review and analyze Michiru's recent behavior. Okay, just what do we have here? It doesn't take long for me to reach an extremely plausible hypothesis. All of the pieces fall into place. I see. So that's what's going on. Why didn't I realize sooner? Careless. Very careless. Damn! I've finally gotten a grasp on the situation, specifically the nature of Matsushima Michiru's bodily distress. Michiru, has your dysentery taken a turn for the worse? You should have told me! Why suffer at times? She doesn't have dysentery, dude. That was entirely your imagination. Okay, first order of business, I need to look at your stool to confirm the progression of your disease. Hurry up! Out with it! Dude, just stop. Just stop. When I grab Michiru's shoulders with both hands and begin shaking her vigorously, there's finally a response. I was half convinced she'd fainted sitting up, but things don't seem to be quite that serious. Maybe she was asleep. Good question. Why am I here? What do you think? Michiru may have recognized my presence, but her normal brusly attitude is not notable by its absence. It's not just that her armor has fallen off, it feels as though she isn't aware of her own state of vulnerability. Why am I here? That would be because I came here. Therefore, here I am. Understood? Gee, gee, thanks, Einstein. Either way, that's of little importance at the moment. Produce a stool sample at once, no. Cut the back talk, maggot! You're the one who ate the contaminated food! Here I am, kindly offering to examine your stool as a favor to my classmate, and this is your attitude? Evacuate your bowels at once! What the heck? Oh boy, I get to ban people! Oh boy! Wait. Are there three of these? I know I can become famous, C. Collins, but the problem is I have no intention of becoming famous, and I don't want to become famous. They're, they're asking the wrong individual. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of people who would want that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yuji, y your, your imagination is just the worst. Hmm? What's that supposed to mean? Are you implying my mental picture of you is fundamentally flawed? Yes! That is exactly the case. <laughs> Yeah, you probably don't want this. I picture you in the mountains, discovering colorful toadstools. 
You try to shriek, oh my gosh, what's this? It's like so cute. But before the so is out of your mouth, you're stuffed it full of mushrooms. You're dead seconds later. <laughs> this is the first time I've gotten free in one day. That was crazy. I don't know why they're targeting my channel because I really don't care about being famous. Tell me, what kind of image do you think your acquaintances have of you? Thanks for joining, Collins. I'll be ending the stream probably after this skit. Thanks for joining in. If you don't want to find one, why are you chasing it in the first place? Hmm. Sadly, I find your explanation incoherent. And that image of you lying dead in the forest with mushrooms spilling out of your mouth doesn't seem to be going anywhere. My apologies. Certainly, my impression of Michiru up to today has been pretty similar to her description. A constantly cheerful idiot girl. But today she's got none of the usual vigor, and her Sunere act has all but disappeared. I, I, I like that. When women act differently from normal, the most likely cause is that time of the month. Really, dude? But we're dealing with a girl going through a difficult age. One must put these questions delicately, or it'll be awkward to answer. I lower my voice and beckon Michiru closer with my hand. Michiru? Well, this game is referencing previous skits that have happened, so if you weren't there for them, yeah, you're going to be confused. Mitsuru draws her face near. I put the matter to her in the most gentlemanly way I can know how. Are you menstruating? Yeah, that's that's definitely the way you put it. That is definitely how he would put it, though. I thought it would be better than shouting, but it seems our opinions differ. Yeah, that, that's not a question you ask, girls. I'm simply trying to understand the situation. Is it iron deficiency, then? That won't give you anemia, you know. Makes it easier to catch colds as well. There's no reason to stuff yourself with vitamin C like an idiot if you forget to eat anything else. You need balance, understand? Balance. Yuji always jumps to the weirdest and stupidest conclusions, and then he's like, man, this girl's an idiot. It's like, no, you're kind of an idiot, too. So it's not anemia, not menstruation, and not nutritional deficiency. I'm out of ideas. Those are the only three things it could possibly be. What's going on here, actually? Maybe she just wanted to stare at the sea. It's a pretty landscape. It's fine. You can give it to me straight. I've been in the field a long time, you know? You're probably not going to shock me. You're the one who just flat out asked her if she was menstruating, so... Yes, go on. What is it? Oh, wow! CG! And that's a pretty CG. I like that one. Yeah, she was just getting a look at the sea. Ah, looking at... Hmm? Say what? The sea? Michiru gives a quick embarrassed nod, her eyes downcast. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful view. Looking at the sea. I ruminate carefully on these words. Just what hidden meaning lurks inside this brief, cryptic cipher of a sentence. It, it's what she was doing. I know of a certain Japanese organization that refers to its maneuvering grounds as the mountains. Alright, so what would the sea indicate? Nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Michiru, when you say the sea, what exactly are you referring to? The sea is the sea, which would make looking the keyword, eh? I'd assumed you were indicating some sort of special surveillance mission. Was I missing some crucial context? This guy is so incredibly weird. With many screws. I honestly am beginning to think that Yuji is the dumbest character in this game. As much as the game wants to tell you that Michiru is, I don't think that's true. I think Michiru is a lot smarter than she's letting on. Excuse me? You were literally just looking at the ocean? Explain yourself. I'm baffled. You were staring at a giant saltwater puddle for no reason whatsoever? It's pretty. 
I don't think... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yuji's a robot. He can't comprehend things like art or scenery. Of course there is. The first and biggest problem is that you don't see anything wrong with it. Listen carefully. Time is not an infinite resource. You only get so much. To find what is weird of Yuji, you need to play the sequels. Okay, well, I guess I'm not finding out then. <laughs> I will... I, unless I end up, like, adoring this game, I will likely not play the sequels. I also don't know if there's a censored version of them. Because I'm... I know that this one has a censored version. I'm not sure about the others, though. Oh, wait. Did I did I forget that? Did I forget to say that? Our lives, our lives are brief. How to make use of the precious time we're given is absolutely essential to solving problems. It's one thing if you've never been given the opportunity to make your own choices. Some people spend their lives following orders from others. If that's the only path open to you, then you just have to deal with it the best you can. But you, my friend, have the good fortune to be free, and you're choosing to use your time staring at the sea for no reason at all? I find that extremely hard to understand. Yeah, he... he... He's weird. As your classmate, I request that you produce an acceptable reason for looking at the ocean. Understood? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I conceive of this as a rest and relaxation period, then? I don't think I can accept it unless there's some sort of concrete meaning to your actions. I see. Hmm. I have to say, you didn't really seem to be enjoying it much. Michiru squints her eyes against the sea breeze. Her expression belies her words. This explanation seems dubious at best, but then again, I suppose it would be foolish of me to expect any coherent logical basis for this woman's behavior. Wow. We stand below the vivid, clear summer sky, utterly wasting our time. If things are going to continue along these lines, it'd be more productive to return to the dorm now and just read for a while. Michiru, my friend, have you considered the possibility that this abnormal desire to view the ocean is the product of some sort of bacterial infection in your brain? This guy is actually a robot. Like, seriously. He's like, I cannot comprehend people just doing things for fun. Then perhaps there's a kappa in your family tree? No, wait. They live in rivers. Damn. Hmm? What's this? Let me see your head for a second. This guy is so weird. Shut your mouth and present your, me your cranium. Don't give me any trouble. I pull Michiru's head toward me and quickly pluck out a single hair. Among her massive, furrowy, bleached blonde locks, there was a single, pure black strand. Oh, so her natural hair color is black. What, did the Kappa ancestor read in any bells? Not to worry, though. Nothing's broken. I just pulled out a black hair for you. Kind of stands out when it's surrounded by a sea of blonde. No matter how much effort you put in, you're probably going to miss a few hairs like this unless you have someone else take a look for you. That's impressive she's able to buy uh, bleach blonde her black hair. That was a mouthful. I feel like black hair would be very hard to dye and have the dye actually show accurately. Hmm. You've got some cucumber butts around your mouth, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that must be why she uses... Yeah, that makes sense now. I'll pass. Why bother looking at it? It's the same as it was yesterday. I think the ocean will get along just fine even if I don't sit around staring at it. I give in to her pestering and stare out at the ocean. As expected, there have been no dramatic developments since the last time I saw it. The sea may have to be the same as always, but Michiru is clearly different today. The tone of her voice is strange. True enough, 70% of the Earth is covered in oceans. Huge is a relative concept, but I think this would qualify by the more typical standards of comparison. <laughs> Michiru laughs, inexplicably amused by my simple statement of fact. But in the next moment, that unusually serious expression is back on her face. Uh, 
Or are we getting the philosophical talk now? Hmm, that's a, that's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, your little issues aren't so big. Michiru brazenly fires off a set of lines that you can normally only hear in the likes of the corniest of decades-old made-for-TV teenage drama fests. Wow, I, I thought it was kind of philosophical. If she's not intentionally quoting something, this is about as hackneyed and cliched as... It gets. I actually thought it was, Michiru. What's more, she's not remotely sheepish about her trite words. Fascinating. Maybe I'll take a look inside her head and see how the machinery works. Pfft. Not everyone is a robot like you, Yuji. She's clearly got a few screws loose already. So do you. So it should pop open easily enough. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe it was. But in the end, I decide to affirm her statement. It's a fact that humans are only one part of greater, the greater whole of nature. It might be cliché to reflect on the transistory nature of our existence, but that doesn't make it any less valid of a... <laughs> Why does it keep cutting off? A thought. <laughs> Even if you can go back and read that, that is absolutely terrible design. And that should have been really easy to catch in, like, th the testing of this. That doesn't mean you need to repeat it. Once was plenty. <laughs> She's weirded me out a little. Michiru has clearly gotten carried away. It might have been a mistake to give her ego a boost like that. In the end, she's nothing more than an idiot. Can't have her getting too satisfied with herself. You are the worst. Too exasperated even to sigh, I send Michiru an expressive glare. Not that I'm confident she'll be able to see the cold pity in my eyes. Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, it looks like the girl's had a sudden flash of insight. Perhaps she's finally become aware of her own foolishness. What? As Michiru babbles on, she moves her arms to hide her tiny chest from you. Um, she has a normal-sized chest. Look, Maggot, I have no interest in your pitiful excuse for a rack. Wow. Why did the conversation turn to this? She literally has, like, a normal-sized chest. A nice body is the term we might use to describe, say, Amine. No, um... Oh, brother. By any reasonable standard, your breasts are tragically underdeveloped. My condolences. Nope. Well, she's also eight years old. That girl's in a whole different category. Are you really happy about beating a complete outlier? Why do conversations in visual novels always turn to this? It's terrible. The corners of Michiru's mouth rise ever so slightly, probably recalling Makina's washboard of a chest and mentally comparing it to her own. What a petty human being. Have you no pride, woman? You might as well gloat about handling your chopsticks better than some tourist from France. Changing the topic! They're big. I'm not reading that. <laughs> She's pissed that I'm not actually saying it out loud. I'm not letting people take it out of context. Apparently my complete lack of sincerity got across to you. But anyway, sounds like you've cheered up a little. <sighs> it's uncomfortable. Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's her cat, Kitty Meow. With the very obviously not cat sound effects. The black cat from the other day appears from somewhere or other. Purring loudly, it sidles up to Michiru and aggressively rubs against her leg. 
I see. So you were searching for a black cat rather than a blue bird. Hmm. What was this cat's name again? Something like... That's right. It's Rommel. Just as I thought. It's the same animal that was at the school before, isn't it? Didn't know it was your pet. That's some cat behavior she's displaying. What, Rommel isn't an acquaintance of yours? Hmm? You dropped something. Allow me. A carton of milk, eh? That's a bit unexpected. <laughs> I see. That's good to hear. If by any chance you've been giving milk to the cat, I would have had to stop you. No worries. Since you're the one drinking it, there's no problem. Enjoy. Oh, don't, don't be cruel to her. Alright, let me break it down for you. Giving a cat milk can upset its stomach badly. If you're that desperate to give it some, you need to dilute the milk with water first. As soon as the words are out of her mouth, Michiru is glancing restlessly around the area. What's wrong? Looking for a source of water by any chance? The black cat wraps itself around Michiru's leg like a fuzzy boa constrictor, then starts to rub the corner of his jaw roughly against her ankle. Looks like it's trying to mark her with its scent. Aw. Hmm, seems like you've pretty much tamed the animal. One could almost get the mistaken impression that he's begging for the milk you always give him. Yeah, the C this is a bald CG. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, it only took about an hour of the game for me to realize Yuji's a jerk. Are you sure about that? Rommel seems awfully... No, it isn't. It's clearly a cat. Yes, we're still on the beach. Apparently giving up on its request for milk, the feline in question sinks to the ground at Michiru's feet and rolls itself up into a ball. Within seconds, it closes its eyes and falls fast asleep. You must have been feeding this fiend for quite a while for it to trust you this much. There's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with having a friend cat. Oh, Michiru. Could you please try to calm down a bit? You have a bad habit of firing off unintelligible gibberish when you get worked up. Michiru reaches down and scratches the neck of the defenseless cat with the tip of her fingers. The animal moves its head in time as, uh, with her strokes in evident pleasure, then begins to lick at the pink pads on his paws. The cat seems so completely and blissfully relaxed that I half expect it to melt into a contented puddle. Just watching it, I can feel some of the stiffness in my shoulders begin to lighten. Yeah. I'd like the cat more if it actually had cat sound effects and not just like someone like, meow. <laughs> It's not good to care, uh, carelessly let your guard down, but keeping up a state of constant tension is an even worse idea. After a brief glance around the area, I decide to take a moment of rest. Alright, I think I'll join him down there for a while. I drop myself to the ground next to Michiru. Flustered, she grabs at her skirt and hot holds it close, preventing any potential visual access to the interior. Don't be an idiot. I don't have any ulterior motive. 
You worry about the stupidest veins. I mean, that's a valid concern for her to have. Like what? A bit of cloth? Nothing worth worrying about. Mitra is apparent, wor apparently worried about disturbing the cat now slumbering at her feet, as she's avoiding any large movements. Either way, I truly don't have any secret plans involving her underwear. I just wanted to sprawl out on the grass and think about nothing at all for a while. It's been a long time since I've laid myself down on the ground and gazed blankly up into the sky like this. Every once in a while, I do spend some time gazing at the clouds, but I tend to be thinking things over while I do so. But as Michiru says, just looking at for no particular reason isn't bad in its own way. The vault of blue above me hasn't changed. It looks just as it did when I was a child. I'd thought the clouds might be a little closer by now, but naturally they're the same as they've always been. My perspective may be a meter or so higher than when I stand, but that's completely insignificant on this scale. I can stretch my hand all up all I want, but it'll never reach the clouds. We're all but chained to the dirt beneath our feet. I see... Not a bad view. Michiru begins to speak, but her tone is somewhat troubled. I love looking up at the sky at night. <laughs><笑> Oh, yeah, I I can make a... I've, I'm basically gathering that the only decisions you make are for going on to Roots and whether you get the good or bad ending. So I'll just save before every decision and can go back. <laughs> Don't grind your teeth, Prince Dusk, it's not worth it. <laughs> I've heard of people who get disturbed by the way of the moon I always seem to follow you around. But the world as a giant box angle is new to me. Hmm. I think I understand. You don't look at the night sky in order to prevent yourself from transforming into a wolf, right? I imagine that would be troublesome. Jeez! Michiru, you're not suicidally depressed, are you? I really hope not. Hmm. Well, this weather really does make you want to take a siesta. That said, I haven't eaten my breakfast yet, so the timing is a bit off. No worries on that front. I've had you down as exceptionally weird for a long time now. Wow. Hmm. What? Wait. If possible, I'd like to talk about this while observing her face, but if Michiru-sama desires otherwise, I can do not but obey. I ease myself back onto the grass and I listen to her voice. <laughs> Thank you for using Dracula as an example. Are we talking about religious ideology here? You want to hear about something about a final moral judgment? That that is part of the normal answer, actually. Hmm. Let's see. I haven't died yet, so I can't speak with much authority. But probably nothing. If you're imagining floating naked in a pure white space, I think you're slightly off. The way I picture it, it's just like going to sleep and then never waking up again. Everyone else will probably be running around worrying about the funeral, but what do you care? Of course, people die in many different ways, but in the end we're all taking a never-ending nap. I don't think that's how it goes, but... That, that's a different topic. 
Depends on how you look at it. Anyway, Heaven and Hell are just remnants of an archaic moral system. No, they're not. Nobody really takes that stuff seriously anymore. Yes, they do. Don't see many people going around walking on water. Or making magical wine out of it. Oh, the ignorance here. Of course, it seems God does appear before of a chosen few every once in a while. Most often to tell them that they need to start up a political campaign. Your perceptive of God and religion is very twisted, Yuji. Um. Mm. Michiru begins to ask something, but stops before the words leave her mouth. After a moment of silence, she starts to speak again. I can't tell whether it's the continuation of her dangling sentence or a completely new topic. <laughs> if I get into a theological discussion on stream, I'd probably end up losing a lot of followers. <laughs> I also like my discussions to be at least somewhat tangentially related to what I'm blaming. Maybe I'll start another channel where I can do theological discussions, because I actually, I've debated doing that. Um, also, me getting a bit ahead of yourself there. Yeah, don't die so soon, or do you plan to die anytime soon? Okay, good. I don't want to be worried about you, Michiru. To be honest, I'm a little displeased to hear a perfectly healthy person scouting out locations for their tomb. You want me to dig a hole and bury you in it? Look, you can't just go making a grave wherever you please. Do you understand that? <laughs> Yeah! That's a weird face. The cat's eyes shoot open at the sound of Michiru's shout. Startled, it bounds away like a spring, vanishing in the blink of an eye. I slowly raise my upper body off the ground, brushing off the grass, clinging to my clothes. Romaine? Why are we talking about lettuce? I wonder what that would be in Japanese. It's clearly <laughs> different fun. <laughs> Why, thank you. How gracious of you. Michiru's expression has returned to the norm. It's as though the conversation just now never happened. Well, if you're hungry, I guess I can split my beans with you. <laughs> well, what do you eat? Says the girl who's always filling up on convenience store boxed lunches, boxed lunches packed full of preservatives. <laughs> hey, Munchables have a very valid place in this world. <laughs> Our little conversation about death took me by surprise, honestly. Not what you expect from a random chat with your classmate. But life is always shadowed by death. The only question is whether you're aware of its presence at your side. <laughs> I want to go home. Beans. <laughs> Green beans are good. Sometimes a man who looked perfectly healthy in the morning gets to sleep and never opens his eyes again. Death can come at any time, and once it does, it's too late to regret the things you've left undone. Morbidity isn't productive, but sometimes you should remember that nothing lasts forever. Mitra's words might be significant in their way. And we still beat her. Mitra calls to me from some distance away. Carefree girl. I'll catch up to her in seconds if that's the extent of her head start. I begin to walk slowly, trying to decide what sort of drink I'll have her buy me. <laughs> Yuji is supremely confident that he will win. And he will win! Because he is a marathon runner. Alrighty. Well, that was definitely a longer stream than I was expecting, but that was good. That was a, that was probably my favorite Grisea stream I've done. The skits were amusing. And we got a bit more depth on some of the characters, so... Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll be porting these VODs to YouTube in the coming week. Backyard Baseball is still happening Monday and Wednesday nights at 8pm, so join in for those if you want. It's always a lot of fun. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and God bless.